Let's take a look at this relative performance ratio that could possibly be a pair trade. The IWM Russell 2000 versus the Triple Q's. So we have the Andrews Pitchfork anchored back here November 2022. And you can see the IWM to QQQ performance was terrible. And then the value play was back on, speculation mostly, and then that fizzled out. And that brings us to July 2024, where the ratio is at the bottom of this pitchfork, only has three tines. There's a middle one, an upper, and a lower. And it's got nice hits where it's anchored so solid one here right after the price label one here another one here pretty close here hit here little whipsaw on the price label another hit here after this one and it looks pretty good anytime i get more than two hits i'm happy here we have three or four solid ones and about six close ones so i like that anchor and we have the AB here following this spike upwards for the IWM outperforming QQQ. And I keep asking myself on the NYA to SPX ratio, will this hit zero here? This has a real chance. This one started off some time ago and hit a high of, of for the ratio of about 1.75, I believe. And now it's at 0 0.417. So will this be the first one to have a zero or negative relative performance ratio? But in the meantime, we're going to look at the contra trend for a little upside movement. And definitely the trend is down for IWM performing against Q's. And I like to get pair trades when they're close in price so there's a disparity between the IWM here at about 200 and the QQQ at 500 so it's not what I like to see but the QTEC which is the NDXT equal weighted technology index has the same price 196 but it doesn't have the indications that we're looking at as far as the Andrews pitchfork and some of the other ones over in the mark that we're going to look at now so you could just substitute QTEC for QQQ and then just follow along on QQQ Either way, it's a real David and Goliath story. Here we have 2,000 Davids in the Russell 2000 throwing slingshots at 30 or so incredible hulks in the QTEC or 100 incredible hulks in the QQQ. Either way, it's a real David and Goliath story. So one could put the pair trade on and I am going to try it. I'm not going to go whole hog on it, but I am going to try it. So put the pair trade on and within, I don't give it too much time here, a couple of days, few days if it decides to go back under 0 0.4131 and I will just jettison that as a mistake. If it decides to head up then we'll write it and then see what happens at the middle tine here of the Andrews pitchfork and start lightening up there and then see if it starts heading back down or by some miracle break through to the upside and hang on to it. And the top is near. It's going to be difficult as always to figure it out but see the triangulation video before this has a pretty good idea of a small range where it could happen 
So we'll watch those levels and this relative performance ratio too so that we don't lose any money and maybe even make a couple of dollars. Long story short, these pair trades like this where the disparity is quite wide between the two sectors like that is good to put on near the top or during the topping process start getting in on those and they can be quite lucrative if it pans out and the reason why I'm even considering it is because in the mark we're looking at the MACD histogram the QQE and the RSI which are very similar the ultimate oscillator and the commodity channel index along with the elder force index buying pressure selling pressure I see a positive bullish divergence in the ultimate oscillator and the commodity channel index versus price for this pair trade. And I've been monitoring these two and they do lead the way and the others will follow to the upside. And the one thing I don't like about it is that the MACD histogram agrees with this pair trade price or relative performance where it's down here and the histogram for MACD is pointed down also and you could do the same thing for QQE and RSI and the Elder Force Index too. We could put downwards trajectories down there and up here and along with these two positives is that it did Print a megaphone by seven and count seven, so I switched it over to six because that means it would have to exceed this high back here on March 28th, where the megaphone cell six count five was. Exceeds that, then the seven print, so that's a lot of room to run to the upside for that on the megaphone. And there's an ATM exhaustion alert up and it's already started going up so that's a good indication a lot of times you'll see these print this blue square box and it doesn't do anything in the first two three days and doesn't do anything subsequently up to eight bars you got to give it at least eight bars but I've seen it fizzle out a lot unless there's a good start like this so it's coming out of the gate pretty good and zigzag could have a swing point to the upside on this D wave up C and down three we would have to give it a few more days of higher lows than back here where this low is here so five higher lows behind it and then five higher lows after it and that could print that zigzag swing point to the upside and the elder force index is above zero 158.052 and the fast moving average is in positive and above the slow moving average so that's a good sign and so next would be the ultimate oscillator to get above its oversold along with RSI, the QQE. And we'll use the Williams percent R as the contra indication to the trend, which is definitely down in the Q's favor. So this could make it above its oversold. And then the psychological index is fast approaching 50. So once you start getting 50 and above, buyers are coming in. That means it's skewed towards the IWM. And if it does pan out, I don't expect it to pan out for too long. So the short term KST here is about to go above its signal line. It's still below zero, but nonetheless pointed up. And the intermediate term and long term KSTs are definitely solidly pointed down trajectory. So, definitely a short term trade that could turn into a miracle, could turn into a debacle. But it's a low risk one right now. 
with this relative performance ratio way down here on the bottom tine of this Andrews pitchfork. Depending on your risk tolerance, you could just let this bounce off of here a couple of times, but you'll be underwater a little bit. Give it time. I don't like to give these time, especially when you're going after a David and Goliath pair trade here. And again, you could substitute the Qs for the Q-Tech 